I'm serious this time, Rai. I am not playing Toy Story again. Daniel, you gotta help me! I'm undergoing a crisis here! What, the crisis of not having a life? How did you know? Well, you do play Toy Story. You don't understand. This has been haunting me for days. You're the only one who can help me! Is that what I think it is? I... I'm out of yarn! Oh. Oh, don't worry. I have just the solution. This is incredible! I still have no yarn. Kirby's Epic Yarn was the first Kirby game to ever make it onto the Nintendo Wii. It reintroduced Nintendo's favorite pink marshmallow and transported him into a whole new world. Unsurprisingly, it didn't take long for speedrunners to take an interest in the game. Not only could Kirby turn into any shape he wished, he could go really fast. Since the beginning of its release, this game has attracted speedrunners from around the globe, and they're going to show just how flexible the game truly is. These incredible players embarked on a journey to bring the time down as low as humanly possible. This is the speedrunning story of Kirby's Epic Yarn. Kirby is no stranger to the fast side of gaming. Titles such as Kirby 64 and Kirby and the Amazing Mirror started growing their competitive scene in the late 2000s. This goofy pink marshmallow would be featured in a new game almost every year, but in 2006, the constant push started to slow down. 2007 and 2009 came and went without Kirby games, and it was one of the first times that a full year would pass without a new installment since its debut. Thankfully, Nintendo came up with a new idea that helped revive the Kirby franchise. On October 14th, 2010, Kirby's Epic Yarn was released in Japan, and many players started getting their hands on the game. Despite the game not being set to release until October 17th in the United States, some people were able to acquire a copy of the game early. The day before its North American release, a player named SirVG would create the Kirby's Epic Yarn forum on the website Speed Demos Archive. VG stated that they completed the game in just under 2 hours and 7 minutes, which received praise and encouragement from multiple users. Despite only playing the game twice, VG was confident that the game could be beaten in less than 2 hours. Later that same day, they had achieved a new personal best, and… it was 4 seconds off their goal. According to VG, most of their time loss revolved around the fights in the game, such as the World 4 boss against Kapamari the Octopus, and the World 6 boss against Meta Knight. The fights in this game aren't that bad as long as the player memorizes the patterns and hits them at the correct time, but missing one chance to hit the boss can cause the player to wait for half a minute before they get another shot in some cases. This is because the fights operate in cycles, and most of them will be vulnerable for a few seconds at a time before or cycling through another lengthy phase. This did not deter VG, and after completing another speedrun, they reached their goal of getting a time under 2 hours. Other users began doing speedruns of the game themselves. One of them managed to get a decent personal best despite the fact that they had to stop in the middle of the run to kill a giant cockroach. The first person to share a video of their discoveries was a player named Nez Kamikaze. Kamikaze was very passionate about finding every way possible to save time, and he found many small discoveries at the beginning of the game. All the while, he was slowly closing in on VG's time. On the 20th of October 2010, Kamikaze would announce that he had taken the world record, but he was still far from satisfied. He continued to explore every nook and cranny to find any spots he could improve. Two days later, Kamikaze would update his post and declare that he had achieved the first time under an hour and 50 minutes. This was a crazy start to the speedrunning scene. Within a week of the game's release, the world record had gone from nearly 2 hours and 7 minutes all the way down to an hour and 49 minutes. A 17 minute time cut, and these players were just getting started. The record would be improved once more in November, and then the forum went quiet for the rest of 2010. 
A couple of months passed before another player by the name Kubelwagon had posted a few videos improving on Kamikaze's previous strategies. More users chimed in for a while and bounced ideas around. By the end of February, the form had run its course and officially became inactive. Look, I wasn't snooping through your things or anything, but I did take these two yarn balls from your closet. Oh, perfect! Now I can finally create my dream! So, how's a ball of yarn going to... Oh, isn't he just the most beautiful marshmallow? <laughs> Why do you have a fork and a knife? Located in a different forum, runners were talking about a plethora of games that they had been practicing for the summer marathon that year. One of those players happened to be Kubelwagon. In the discussion, he revealed that he took the Kirby's Epic Yarn record by close to two minutes with a 1.46.01 on July 15th, 2011. Leading up to this point, there were no full game runs caught on video, none that survived at least. That was until Summer Games Done Quick 2011 had begun, when everyone would finally see the game being performed in front of an audience for the first time. The runner that was showing off the game was Kubelwagon. Three, two, one, go. Throughout most of the run, Kubel moves through the levels in Kirby's car form by tapping right on the D-pad twice. He often uses the car in combination with Kirby's parachute transformation, which is performed by pressing 2 in mid-air. This was usually a safety measure to ensure that he wouldn't fall off of a platform, but it did lose him a few milliseconds each time he used it. Most of the run showed off a ton of minor optimizations and very satisfying gameplay. However, it isn't until about a half hour in when we see the first big time save during the World 2 boss fight against Hot Wings. When pressing 1 on the controller, Kirby will slash his arm and take out any enemy in his way. If the player holds down the button while performing this action, the enemy will turn into nothing but a ball of yarn. This is a crucial mechanic, especially when it comes to the bosses. During the Hot Wings fight, Kirby can grab the firebirds that are thrown at him and deflect them back toward the boss. In between each hit, the player has to wait for an egregiously long phase before they have a chance to grab another bird and hit the boss again. This takes a while, but Kubelwagon had a trick up his sleeve. During the very first phase, the boss will constantly shoot birds until he takes a hit. Using this knowledge, Kubel patiently stacks up three yarn balls before completing the first phase. Using the two balls left over, he can immediately hit the boss at the beginning of his second and third phase. This strategy's origin stems from Nez Kamikaze back in the SDA forum, and was improved further by Kubel to save over an entire minute over a normal fight. This was without a doubt the biggest time save featured, and the rest of the run was performed rather well. Smaller optimizations were made for the King DDD boss fight and a couple of other levels as well. Kubel ended the run with a 146.55, which came within a minute of the record. Very solid for a GDQ run. Kubel Wagon shortly after would move on to other speed games. It wouldn't be too long before we would see the first documented evidence of a world record. I think this calls for a celebratory snack. All thanks to you, Daniel. What can I say? I am pretty good at looking through other people's property. Yeah. Did you just hear that? Wait, can I still eat him? A few days after the GDQ run was posted online, another player would get a slice of the world record pie. On August 26, 2011, a Japanese player named Jet Toast published their personal best in Kirby's Epic Yarn. It was pretty safe to say that they had no competitors, because Jet Toast achieved the first time under an hour and 40 minutes. How was a time this low even remotely possible? 
Toast added many little strategies in the run to save time. Whether it was throwing a rocket through a wall instead of waiting for a bomb to blow up, or getting a faster cycle on a rotating platform, Toast was way ahead of the curve. But without a doubt, their biggest improvements were in the boss fights. In the first boss against Fangora, Toast skipped an entire phase by throwing the fireballs back at the dragon. This cut off nearly half a minute of the fight. In the World 3 boss against Squashini, he goes through many different phases. During the first phase, Squashini hides in one of three hats shuffled in front of the player. If you guess the correct hat, which is always the right one, the next phase gets Kirby attached to a bomb. We don't want that. By choosing the wrong hat, a different phase is triggered with a bunch of cards being thrown at Kirby. This is where similarities between boss strategies become apparent. Toast figured out that by stacking three different cards, Kirby could defeat the boss 15 seconds after acquiring them. In World 5 during the King DDD fight, Toast stored up yarn balls using DDD's projectiles. This made the four phases of the fight a breeze, defeating the boss in less than a minute. In World 6, exploits were also found in the Meta Knight fight. Toast was able to store two yarn balls to speed through two of the four phases. When comparing Kubel's and Toast's run, the majority of the time saved was in the boss fights. That, along with more polished movement, helped Toast wreck anybody's chance to get the top spot. Toast moved on shortly after achieving this milestone, and the game went silent. After a year of people rushing to get the fastest time, there would be a record-breaking drought of competition. For the time being, most of the activity within the game took place in the two-player category. The one-player run ceased to have any competition for over half a decade. Six years later, many games saw huge developments in the mid-2010s due to the introduction of Speedrun.com. However, the one-player Epic Yarn leaderboards remained stagnant. Jet Toast spent years in the top spot, but in the beginning of 2017, there was a new player who was slowly but surely rising to the top. In April, this player would be on the cusp of achieving a new record. Soon enough, a player named Fumble would take over Kirby's Epic Yarn. Fumble was an up-and-coming speedrunner who dedicated a ton of time to perfect their speedrunning craft. As they continued to submit better and better times, they would soon come within arm's reach of the record. By the 30th of April 2017, Fumble made history in Kirby's Epic Yarn. Fumble's record can largely be attributed to cleaner movement and optimization. In level 2-4, Dino Jungle, Fumble drives off of the dinosaur's head and swims against the current of the water by mashing the two button. This saved about 5 seconds over riding the dino. In 3-2, Mushroom Run, Fumble noticed that the bouncy mushrooms reduced Kirby's speed. In response, they figured out that by enabling Kirby's parachute ability just above the mushroom, it acts like a normal platform. This allowed them to go into car form, saving a huge chunk of time. They also improved on the Meta Knight fight by grabbing and storing three yarn balls, completely eliminating the last phase. All of the new tech was well and good, but better gameplay wasn't the only reason why Fumble took the record. When starting up Kirby's Epic Yarn for the first time, the game will ask to enable autosaves. If saves are turned on, every loading screen between levels can take anywhere from 2 to 10 seconds depending on the condition of the console. Fumble chose to turn off the save feature, and this decision alone saved them over a minute and a half. This was one of the biggest factors that helped Fumble set a faster time. They improved on many sections of the game, but the absence of saves definitely assisted in their success. For now, at least. Seven days later, Fumble had taken the time down another 16 seconds, just barely squeezing out a sub-139. It became clear that this person was dedicated to absolutely demolishing the speedrun. With continuous improvement in sight, minute barrier after minute barrier would come crashing down. Fumble was going to change Kirby's epic yarn forever.
looking at a 135.30 run here. This is three minutes ahead of the second fastest one player run. I need to be over here towards the center, but still towards the left. Look at how quick I did that. Can see ya! In exactly 93 days, Fumble lowered the time by nearly 4 minutes. Each record showed off a new minute barrier being broken every single time. Of course, the discovery of a ton of new tech made this possible. In 4-1 Splash Beach, the level operates in cycles. Essentially, water rises and lowers every 5 seconds. This means in this particular section, Kirby has a 5 second window to swim up to the top every 10 seconds. For a while, Fumble waited for the water to rise up again during runs, but after their 137, they learned how to race through the level fast enough to skip the extra cycle, saving over 10 seconds. One of the most challenging time saves implemented was in World 6, specifically in the gravity-defying level named Mysterious UFO. During the stage, Kirby has to pull these red buttons in order to change from regular gravity to moon gravity and vice versa. In this area, Kirby has to enable moon gravity in order to make the jump to the other side. Following this, he must rotate the cauldron until it opens up the correct path to revert gravity back to normal so he can destroy the yellow boxes. Instead of altering gravity, Fumble triggered this platform to come closer and align themselves on these boxes. Without thinking twice, they took a leap of faith. Milliseconds before the platform retracted, Fumble stuck the landing just in time. Since they never changed gravity, they could skip the top path later, saving 20 seconds. 101 days after their first record, Fumble set another minute breaking milestone. 134.26. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good, I say, being 5 minutes ahead of the second best time. Compared to their last world record, they improved a lot in their late game performance. Once they completed Cloud Palace and Castle DDD, Fumble attained a new world record with a time of 134.26. Following this success, Fumble stepped back from speedrunning Kirby's epic yarn. For months, they had dominated the category even when no one else was competing alongside them. They were just doing what they loved, and it resulted in many world records. After they stopped playing the game, another period of inactivity began. 13 months after Fumble's last record, another player would appear seemingly out of thin air. A multi-time world record holder for the two-player category, this person was no stranger to Kirby's epic yarn. Prior to running this game, he had quite the speedrunning resume in Paper Mario. Fittingly enough, the name of this player was Paper Mario. When he returned to the game, Paper Ario took the top spot in the blink of an eye. He was about 17 seconds ahead of Fumble's time when he finished the run. Even though it wasn't a huge gap, there were new strategies used. One such strat was in 5-2, Cozy Cabin. Paper Ario grabbed this Waddle Dee spear, which turns into an arrow instead of a yarn ball because it comes from a weapon. He used it to destroy all of the boxes in a quick manner, which saved a good few seconds. He also optimized his movement in 5-4 and calculated his swings very well in Cloud Palace. His previous experience in two-player helped him get ahead, but his glory didn't last for long. Fumble caught wind of the new record in Kirby's epic yarn and wasn't going to stand idly by and take the loss. Over the course of the next month, Fumble returned to the game. After multiple unfortunate runs, Fumble got a pretty good pace exiting World 2. They cleared each boss swiftly, over a minute ahead of their personal best going into the final world. Oh, but they weren't done. This literally might be 132. Fumble was going to blow everyone's minds and get one of the fastest completions of the final world. They were miles ahead of Paper Ario going into the Yin Yarn boss fight, and the ending didn't disappoint. I think I'm gonna not be looking at the chat here, I'm just gonna focus. Why? No, it's okay, it's okay. It's fine. Guys, 
Fuck 133. 133? What a joke. What a joke. More like 130p. More like 130p. Fumble took back the record and skipped an entire minute barrier. They came back after a hiatus for a year and still smashed the world record. But all good things must come to an end. Once Fumble submitted their world record, they retired from consistently running Kirby's Epic Yarn. In the following months, Fumble created the Discord server for the Epic Yarn community, and they would remain content on the sidelines watching the next ambitious runners take the game on. Oh, that's where Sonic goes 6 went. Wait, and that's Sonic and the Secret Rings. If this isn't how I wanted things to end, I don't want to be responsible for my own death. Well, while we wait for our inevitable demise, I might as well check out all these cool things that are floating around. Daniel, quick! Uh, give me all the yarn pieces you can find! Only if I get to take Sonic with me. No, that made that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna grab this side, and then you're gonna grab that side. Well, I guess that's our way out of here. Well what do we do now? We can't let him keep sucking things forever. Well, I think there's only one thing that we can do. Now this, this is perfection. 18 months later, Fumble was still on top by quite a margin and it seemed that wouldn't change anytime soon. However, during everybody's favorite year of all time, one of the top three runners would get a new world record. But this time, it wasn't Fumble. It wasn't Paper Oreo. Most of the tricks and discoveries mentioned were originally found by this player. The name of this intrepid speedrunner was Inari. Backtracking to early 2018, Inari had just completed their first playthrough of Kirby's Epic Yarn. After seeing other games develop speedrun communities, he wondered just how fast he could play the any% percent run of the game. After clocking in his first run in about 2 hours, he practiced until he got a respectable time of 135.49, landing him in 2nd place. His time remained in the top 3 for nearly 2 years. Then, in March of 2020, Inari regained his motivation and didn't hold back. With a 23 second improvement, Inari finally secured the record. Fumble's reign was officially over. The only question now is, what were the new strategies he used? For starters, Inari noticed that by grabbing onto an enemy while airborne, Kirby not only stayed in the air for a longer period, but also maintained his momentum. He used this knowledge to get a faster cycle in Cool Cave. Beforehand, runners were locked into the same cycle because this spiked ball slowed the player down before they could clear the next section of the cave. But by grabbing this bat and keeping Kirby's momentum going, 
going. Inari could destroy this spiked ball to get a faster cycle in the cave, saving over 5 seconds. He also swung along the bees in Dino Jungle, and used the extra air during the grabbing animation to get on top of the boxes in Cozy Cabin. Inari even skipped a 30 second section in Mysterious UFO by destroying these boxes without altering gravity. This helped him get to the next portion of the level right away. Even with all these time saves, Inari was still less than half a minute ahead, which clearly meant there was a long way to go. Inari took note of this, and returned just two weeks later and shaved another minute off the record. Interestingly, Inari was behind his personal best during a large chunk of the run. Even at the 30 minute mark, he was a good 10 seconds behind his previous pace, but his middle and late game performance made up for the slow beginning. He kept getting fast segments left and right, despite the sloppy Meta Knight fight. Inari completed Dream World with a dazzlingly fast time. He didn't let up on the final boss either and achieved his fastest completion of it ever. This was an incredible example of an epic comeback in speedrunning. Inari felt comfortable enough to walk away with this record, but but he'd be back. Now is the perfect time to bring up two key factors in the game that players have been trying to take control of for years. These could both act as time saves or time losses. The first one is the bead counter. After completing a level, the game takes you to a scoreboard that recaps how many beads you obtained as well as other collectibles. Beads are spread all over each level in Kirby's epic yarn and speedrunners do everything they can to avoid them. This is because the more beads that are collected, the longer it takes for the game to count them all on the board. This results in varying time loss on each screen, which can add up over the course of a run. The second major factor is the goal bell at the end of each level. This wasn't a big issue in 2017 because runs were still being improved by the minutes. But now that the speedrun was becoming more optimized, the roulette wheel can make or break a good pace. There's a range of time for how long it takes for the roulette wheel to stop. For example, an amazing bell is when the roulette wheel stops after 5 seconds. A mid bell takes about 6 to 7 seconds, and a bad bell can take up to 8 seconds. However, these time losses didn't stop Inari from achieving world records. On February 21st, 2021, he set a new world record shortly after returning. His Meta Knight fight was especially efficient, and that propelled him far enough ahead to secure a new time. Shortly after, in early March, Inari obliterated the 131 minute barrier. He played exceptionally well this time around, and an unbelievable milestone in the game's history was starting to become a true possibility. Ability. Inari was 31 seconds away from breaking into the 1 hour 29 minute barrier, something no one else had ever come close to. For the past decade, the world records were stuck in the hour 30 minute range. But Inari revolutionized the way runners played the game. Now, there was only one logical thing Inari could do. He stopped running Kirby's Epic Yarn. Yeah, not quite what others may have expected, but that's how the events shook out. He wanted to focus on his other speed games first before coming back to Epic Yarn. He thought that if he could achieve all of his other speedrun goals, he could get the coveted milestone. Until then, Inari was going to leave the record untouched. Vier was an upcoming prodigy in the epic yarn speedrunning scene. It had been over two and a half years since Inari set his record by the time they started running the game. Beginning in September 2023, Vier wasn't going for just one world record. In the span of a single week, they claimed the 100% world record and then got to the New Game Plus and All Levels world record. They began chipping away at their any percent personal best, and after conquering almost every leaderboard in the game, Vier broke through and took Inari's world record. Another 15 seconds closer to the 129 minute barrier. After his 33 month hiatus, this quickly perked up on Inari's speedrun radar, and he emerged back into the Kirby's Epic Yarn community. Over time, he didn't think about his world record all too often because he didn't think that it would be beaten anytime soon. Besides, he was going to get back on the grind when the time was right. But now, he was getting forced back into the action with the revelation of Vier's new time. With motivation at an all-time high, Inari returned to finish what he had started once and for all.